Hey everybody, Steve Przbrowski here. Welcome to episode five of How to Excel at Fire Department Promotional Exams. Episode five is gonna discuss what to expect on your next promotional examination. So let's get started. All right, as a reminder, my website, code3firetraining.com, has a free stuff link on it with lots of great promotional preparation, officer development, leadership information, something for pretty much everybody on there to be the best they can be, regardless of what their career aspirations are. So please feel free to check out my website and all the great stuff I have on there to help you be the best you can be. All right, these webinars are based on one of the three books I've had published, this one being How to Excel at Fire Department Promotional Exams. The other two books are entry-level books that I've had about 80 plus webinars, also on my YouTube channel and my website available for entry-level firefighters, but this is based on those that want to get promoted. So let's get going. All right, in the previous episodes, we discussed pit Paul excuse me in the previous episodes we discussed the pitfalls of poor performers those that didn't do as good as they wanted to do or maybe those that didn't even pass their promotional exam it happens not everyone is meant to pass the first time if not maybe the second or third time also we discussed in episodes three and four 12 steps that you can take to ensure success in your next promotional examination so let's build upon that and give you a little more of an overview about what to expect on a typical promotional examination so Every department does it slightly different. Around the country, there's probably not one standard way to hold a promotional examination. There are still probably a few departments that the promotional, examin may, promotional examination be maybe non-existent, meaning it may be seniority-based. I still hear every now and then of a department that promotes people just based on seniority, meaning you automatically get, say, 20 years on the job or 25 years on the job, boom, you're promoted upward. Does that mean you're gonna be the best candidate just based on seniority? I beg to differ, but that's not my choice to make or really decision to have because it's not my department. I got my opinions, but I'll save that for another time. Um, most departments have some form or fashion of a promotional process, whether it's engineer, company officer, chief officer, there's some type of process typically known as an assessment center. Every now and then I'll see a department promote people based on just maybe a written test. And whoever gets the highest written test, that's the ones that go to the promotional exam, excuse me, that, those are the ones that get promoted. It's like, wow, so, okay, that just because you scored the highest in a written examination, does that mean you're gonna be the best person to be the next captain or next lieutenant, next battalion chief? I don't know, I hope it works out, but again, that's probably not as common as it used to be, um, but there are some departments that just require a written test or maybe some just do maybe an oral interview. But again, those are probably far and few. Now here's something to think about. Even if your department does, right now let's say your department just has something basic like seniority or maybe a written test, or even just an oral interview, something very minimal. Okay, just because that's the way it is today, doesn't mean that they're not gonna change it and add more things in the future. Um, you know, anything's possible, you know, especially in today's world where departments are really trying their best, I'm hoping, try to be positive here in this negative world we live in. I'm really hoping that most departments, most fire chiefs are trying to do the right thing and trying to put together some type of assessment center that really provides a day in the life of a promoted candidate and tries to pick out the best of the best. I know a promotional exam is not perfect. There is no perfect exam. Just because you got the best written test score doesn't mean you're gonna be the best promoted person. Just because you did best in the oral interview doesn't mean you're gonna be the best person. You know, that's why in a perfect world, in my opinion, there's a series of events known as an assessment center that I'll discuss here uh, shortly. So ultimately though, find out what your department does and prepare for the position because if you prepare for the position, it shouldn't matter what they throw at you, a written test, an oral interview, whatever. So let's get going. Typically on most departments, um, like I said, more and more departments are using an assessment center. It could be anywhere from one, two or three days. Heck, it could be a half day. But more than likely, it's gonna be a day or two days. Um, obviously, depending on the position you're aspiring to, there's gonna be different types of events, and we'll talk about those events. But it's usually gonna be a couple of days, more than likely. Candidates are usually assigned certain time or event slots. I mean, you as a candidate may be going if it's two days, both days, or all three days, or it may just be you're going on one of the days, meaning a third of the candidates go on day one, another third go on day two, and another third go on day three, or whatever form or fashion. Um, but you're assigned typically a day or days and different event slots um, along with your other competitors. Um, 
an assessment center is typically a more standardized process for all. And it goes back to what I was just talking about. A written test, in my opinion, does not determine who the best promoted person will be, nor does an oral interview. That's why it's good to have a series of events that pretty much simulate sort of a, you know, a day in the life of a certain position, you know, position job related activities. Now, before you say, well, you know, an assessment center, people can sort of, you know, BS their way through that because they're good talkers or they studied well. Okay, I get that it happens, but I'll use the counter argument. Just because you scored number one in the written test, does that mean just because you can regurgitate information, you're going to be the best whatever position? I beg to differ. But again, we're all entitled to our opinions. Don't hate the player, hate the game, I guess. That's the way, the way they say it. But typically an assessment center is made up of different job activities or like I said, a day in the life of a person in that pr promoter position. So most of the time you'll find outside raters. So if you're preparing for say an engineer's examination, um, a department will usually have raters that are at the same rank or above. So if you're doing an engineer's test, usually a department will have other engineers from other departments or more than likely company officers because company officers, lieutenant, captain, whatever the rank is, have usually served at the engineer rank and they're also supervisory ranks. So usually it's one rank above, if not the same rank. That's the same like if you're going for a captain's test, you're probably gonna have battalion chiefs as your raiders. Or if you're going for a battalion chief test, you'll usually have the next rank up, deputy, division, assistant, whatever the department calls their chiefs. <laughs> Whereas fire chiefs, for example, if you're going for a fire chief examination, usually you'll have other fire chiefs from neighboring jurisdictions as your raiders. You may also probably have some other department heads that you'll be interacting with on a daily basis. Like I took a fire chief's exam recently and there was a couple panels. One panel was like made up of other fire chiefs from around the area. And the other panel was made up of department heads at the same rank, meaning the people I'd be working with. They were evaluating if I could be one of their peers, if I would be a good fit. So you had like the police chief, the public works director, parks and rec director, library director, and all of them should have a say in who their future counterpart will be. But typically outside raiders, they may be inside raiders. There's nothing wrong. I mean, the key is, is the key really to who the Raiders are is the training that goes on beforehand. Some departments don't train the Raiders at all. Most usually do though. Give them an overview and you know, don't be biased, don't be discriminatory, all the must do's and must don't do's. But anyway, outside Raiders are typically the norm usually at one rank above, meaning these are people that have done the job that you want. So don't BS the BS, don't BS the folks that know what they're doing. Cause like I said, they've done your job and they supervise the position that you are aspiring to. There may also be an inside proctor or moderator, meaning the raiders, like if you're going for say a battalion chief's examination. So you're a captain taking the battalion chief's test. There may be like a deputy chief, an assistant chief, and maybe a division chief from all different departments um, as your raiders. And then usually there's someone from human resources department from your own agency or jurisdiction and, or maybe a chief officer. Like in our department, it's not uncommon because of when we run a captain's test or a battalion chief's test, it's not uncommon for us to have multiple events, which I'll talk about here shortly, but like an oral interview station, um, a personnel um, problem scenario, a couple of different fire ground emergency scenarios. So we typically have four to five different events or stations for our captains and our battalion chiefs. Well, we don't typically have that much staff. So besides the outside raiders, we'll also usually have maybe various inside proctors like Two of the deputy chiefs may serve as proctors for two of the events, and then maybe a few of our HR staff members may also fill those positions for other events. That proctor moderator, they're not there to grade you or rate you. They're the one that grabs you from um, wherever you're waiting to go into the room. They're the one that walks you in. They're the one that introduces you to the raiders. They're the ones that walks you out and then make sure that the Raiders are not asking anything illegal, inappropriate, or whatever else. You know, make sure they're not going to to the places they shouldn't be going when it comes to questioning, which unfortunately it happens, not on purpose, but usually by accident. That's why you have a proctor to be able to say, oh, time out, can't ask that question, let's maybe move on. And the proctor is also there to make sure you're keeping toward your time because everyone has a set specific time frame to be in the room um, before the next candidate arrives. My point though is when you're in that room, Treat everyone, whether they're rating you or they're a proctor or moderator, treat them all equally. Make sure you get eye contact with each of them. Make sure you treat them respectfully with a smile. 
I'd say a nice shake of the hand, but this is right now July 2020, and we're in the middle of a nationwide, excuse me, worldwide pandemic, where shaking hands is pretty much sort of out of the question. I know it's hard to imagine five months ago, but and maybe if you're watching this in 2021 or beyond, you'll be going, what are you talking about, Steve? Let's hope that this stuff is done with, but I digress. So whether it's a shake of the hand, if you can do that, or it's maybe a virtual fist bump or whatever else, make sure you treat everyone equally. Like I participated in a, in a neighboring department's uh, division chief testing process last week, and we were all wearing our masks, as was the candidate. The candidate was able to take their mask off. We were all socially distanced. Very weird, but we made it work. And when the candidate walked in the room, normally we, we'd get up as the Raiders and we'd you know reach our hand out and say, hi, you know, Steve Prisprowski, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. Well, it was, we tried to make the best of it. And usually when the candidate walked in the room, we were just, you know, most of them had fun with it again. We're, we know they're stressed. We know you're stressed. Don't be goofy, but also have a sense of humor and just be realistic. So usually when most of them walked in, they usually would say, hey, I'd like to shake your hand, Chiefs, but instead, how about a virtual fist bump? And it's like, cool, okay, we'll make that work, you know, or, you know, hey, trying to make light of the situation in a positive manner. But anyway, treat everyone with respect. Um, the test itself, the assessment center, may be created by inside personnel or outside personnel. What I mean by that is, in many departments, the department's human resources or personnel division personnel, 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 I'm a college graduate. The folks that run our human resources or personnel services departments, whatever your agency or city or jurisdiction calls it, may be the ones creating the testing process. And they don't do it in a vacuum, they obviously make sure they communicate with the fire department staff to make sure everything's accurate and appropriate and realistic. Or depending on the type of department, maybe the fire department puts the stuff together, meaning the deputy chief of training is responsible for putting together the test or the deputy chief of personnel or administration. Again, there's no right or wrong. And some departments actually contracted out to private companies. There's many private countries, countries, private companies around the country that do assessment center testing, fire department, police department, public, you know, governmental testing. You know, there's no wrong, there's no right. Even if, you know, our department's done both. For a while, when we were short on our personnel services staff, we actually contracted with one of the local vendors. Now, he still reached out to us to make sure that we validated everything in the center. When I use the term validation, I'm, let me use that since validation is a specific meaning. Um, he reached out, obviously, to make sure that everything he was doing was per our standards, per our guidelines, per our for the way we do business. So he made sure that everything was appropriate. So when our candidates sometimes complain that, well, hey, it was done by an outside vendor. Well, the outside vendor did reach out to us. Department staff actually had a chance to look at all the questions being asked and all the things being asked of the candidates. And we bought off on it that, yep, that's the way we do things here. That's what the expectation is. So regardless, it doesn't matter. Prepare for the position. You're gonna hear me saying that time and time again in every episode of these prepare for the position. It doesn't matter who creates the test and it doesn't matter who's rating you. So if your department is using an outside vendor, I encourage you to, to do a Google search because some of these vendors actually have websites. I mean, the websites are not necessarily for the candidates. The websites are there to sell their products to departments and there's nothing wrong with using these services. Usually a lot of departments that get a lot of grievances or lawsuits will hire private vendors to do their, their um, testing because they've been sued or, or they've had grievances filed against them and they just want to contract it out to someone that can, you know, go to court for them and back up what they're doing, which is usually the case. But again, there may be information that may be beneficial. And with all due respect, an assessment center that's properly created uh, validated and all those other legal things, it's probably the most realistic and valid way to assess a candidate. A day in the life of a typical person in that position you aspire to or aspire to. So what type of events may you get, you may be wondering. Well, most common events that I've seen across the country um, asked of a promotional candidate are typically these. It's not uncommon if you're going for engineer, company officer, probably battalion chief to have a written examination, 100 questions, multiple choice. Obviously, if you're testing for a fire chief, a deputy chief, assistant chief, those high up executive chief positions, you're probably not gonna have a written examination because in all honesty, if, we're, if you're testing your future fire chief on the EFSTA Essentials of Firefighting or the Jones and Bartlett, um, I can't remember the title of their version of that book, you're missing the mark because the job of a fire chief is not the same as the job of a company officer, let alone a firefighter. They're just apples and oranges. 
but usually at the lower rank positions, there's gonna be a written examination to test your knowledge. Can you regurgitate what you studied? You know, basically you get a stack of books about six feet tall, I'm joking, I'm sarcastic, of course. You get a stack of books that you have to read, you know, sometimes six months in advance, you get the list of here's the books, which is not enough time to read all these books for a hundred questions, but I don't wanna say it's a rite of passage, but if you really think about it, a written examination is not a waste of time. A lot of people say it's a waste of time. You know, who cares if I can regurgitate something about the incident command system or regurgitate department policies? Well, think about it. If you're studying for the written examination, you're also studying for the other events, which we'll talk about here shortly, because whether it's the IFSTA books, the JNB books, or leadership textbooks, or whatever good books that are out there, they're not gonna benefit you just in the written examination. Again, prepare for the position, not the test. And if you read these books, they'll probably also help you with the whole position itself. Most departments will also do an oral interview panel. You know, besides written examination, they'll give you an oral interview panel to find out why do you want the job? How have you prepared for the position? Why is it now the best time in your career to apply or for you to be selected? You know, they'll ask you questions about the position itself. In a future episode, I'll talk more about these events, but for right now, I just want to touch on basic overview of these events. Um, you may have a subordinate or personnel counseling scenario. Now, if you're going for the rank of engineer, you're gonna get a written examination more than likely. You'll probably get an oral interview, but you're probably not gonna get a personnel counseling scenario because again, as an engineer or driver operator, apparatus operator, you're not supervising people typically. For supervisor positions, company officer and above, you'll probably have a counseling session. It may be a role play scenario where you walk in the room and immediately someone's in your grill about, hey, Captain, why are you telling me to polish my boots? You don't, you know, you don't polish your boots. Who are you? You don't lead by example. And they're expecting you to diffuse a hot situation. I mean, hot in the sense of someone's getting in your grill and ready to, not getting ready, pissed at you as a boss. And how do you handle the stress? It may be a role play or it may be a video scenario. They may, they may give you a video scenario of something bad happening or inappropriate, illegal, unethical. And they say, all right, Captain or Battalion Chief, Here's the scenario, you walk into firehouse number three and this is what you see. And as you see two firefighters ready to punch each other, you're like, yeah, how are you gonna handle it? And then they'll ask you a series of questions based on what you just saw in the video. Again, there's no wrong, there's no right. Um, every, some departments use either, some just may ask you a bunch of questions, but be prepared to sit down with somebody or it may be a team meeting. Think about it, as a company officer, a common event also, besides a role play or watching a video and you know, sort of having an interactive um, response, you may also get for a personnel counseling session of, hey, the Raiders are actually your crew members. So you're the new captain assigned to engine three on the B shift. The two Raiders in front of you, who are already captains, because remember, or excuse me, probably battalion chiefs if you're taking the captain's test, there are your two firefighters, just imagine that. There are your two firefighters and please maybe share your day one expectations. Or they're maybe pissed about the previous officer and they wanna tell you how you should be running your shift because you're the new officer in town and we'll see how that one goes. But anyway, personnel counseling, like I said, could be videos, role plays, could be crew meetings, it could be, you know, whatever crew expectation sessions, all basic stuff that you should have already prepared for. Again, prepare for the position. Sound like a broken record, I get that, but it's so true. Other events, you may get an in-basket, which is a prioritization exercise. You may get like 20 items that are maybe literally post-it notes or half page um, printouts of something, and you're supposed to prioritize them or, you know, write how you'd handle the situations. Some of it can be delegated, obviously. Others are just maybe, prioritizing it with either high, medium, or low, or whatever prioritization mechanism you use. Or it may be a writing exercise. Um, the writing exercise may ask of you, hey, here's a scenario, how do you handle it? You know, I remember some of the writing exercises I've seen in the past are, you know, the department's in need of a certain policy because of a maybe a hot, hot topic that's out there. I mean, there's many hot topics that you should be aware of if you're testing, excuse me, for a promoted position. There's a lot of hot topics out there right now. Health and wellness is a big one. Technology is always a big one. You know, all these things, budgets are always a big thing. You may get asked a question, maybe not at the captain level, but definitely at the battalion chief or higher level, especially if you're going for fire chief or deputy chief, you're gonna probably have a writing exercise 
which is going to question, okay, it's sort of like an oral interview, but it's just in written format, Can you, and it's testing your written communication skills. You may get it in, in advance of the test, you may get it day of, whatever it is. And again, we'll talk more about each of these in future events. Other common events, maybe an oral presentation or a teaching demonstration. For our captains, we've given them both at different times. Sometimes it's a teaching dem demonstration, sort of, okay, 15 minutes, you know, because remember, this is an assessment center. They're there for a day or two days. They've got different events they're going to or stations. And we'll bring them into the teaching demo. And it could be, hey, here's a store pressure water extinguisher. Okay, you got 15 minutes to prepare for a teaching demonstration. When you walk in the room, the Raiders will be your new crew. Go, you see there's a theme here. The Raiders are your new crew. Teach them how to use this store pressure water extinguisher. You know, so, the, you know, we'll give you some props to use, maybe a a conference pad to write on. Um, you're probably not going to do a PowerPoint presentation, but you know, we'll probably have an ex obviously an extinguisher there because it's hard to teach something that's not physically in front of you. Or it could be a oral presentation. So a teaching demonstration may be for a company officer, because think about it, as a company officer, you're going to be teaching your crew. Now, if you're going for battalion chief for hire, it's not uncommon for chief officers to be doing oral presentations to the city council, maybe to the command staff, maybe to the board of commissioners, whoever, uh, maybe to the department. So there comes the oral presentation of you better be able to have excellent communication skills, whether it's written communication or oral communication, and especially interpersonal communication, to be able to get your message across. And then the other most common event you may see for a company officer and chief officer is an emergency simulation or a fire round simulation or a tactical exercise, something like that, that has you be, if you're a captain or company officer, you're the first arriving lieutenant or captain. Here's your fire. That may be the event. If it's for a battalion chief test, usually we don't have the battalion chief arrive first due. Usually it's, hey, you, your first alarm is on scene. Here's the, the crappy, for lack of a better term, crappy size up or report on conditions report that your first two officer made and basically crappy assignments that they've made. Now you're arriving, you know, fifth due on this first alarm assignment. How do you clean it up? You know, that's very common for battalion chief. Now, again, if you're going for deputy assistant fire chief, you're probably not going to have to manage a fire because typically executive chiefs don't do that. We have battalion chiefs that do that. We still respond to the incident, but we're not going to be typically the ones managing the incident. But if you're testing for a small department, let's say you want to be a fire chief for a one station department, there's a lot of one station fire departments that the only chief, the only chief officer is a fire chief. And maybe the captains act, act as battalion chiefs. So maybe if it's a small department, you will be tested on that as a fire chief because you're going to be having to do these things. Now, about the only thing I didn't mention um, is I talked about engineer promotional exams. If you have to take an engineer promotional exam, one of the things they'll usually do is take you out to the drill grounds and probably have you do a DMV pre-trip inspection, have you check out the rig, whatever it is, whatever rigs you have on the job. They'll probably have you drive the rig, maybe around a cone course, backing, forward, you know, all the things. If you have truck companies, maybe they'll have you set up the truck company. Um, if you have specialized apparatus, they may test you on that. Again, none of this should be a secret. Seriously, none of this should be a secret. I don't know of any department in today's world that doesn't at least give you an upfront heads up of, okay, it's whatever July, uh, whatever day today is, uh, Sunday, I think July 19th this is today. Okay. If we were going to start a testing process, say, for whatever rank, and we'd be opening it up here in a couple of weeks, they're usually going to keep it open for like a couple of weeks, if not a month. And then after that point, start the events of the assessment center. So usually when the announcement comes out of whatever promotion that is occurring, they're gonna give you typically, again, I know most departments do this, there may be a few that don't, but they'll usually say, all right, we're testing for a company officer. Here's the deadline to apply, here's how to apply, you know, submit your application online. You know, here's the testing process. The first phase will be a written examination. The second phase will be an assessment center a week later, a month later, whatever, with these events. And hopefully your department is good enough to help not keep things a secret. I mean, most departments are good in the fact that they'll write it down on the, on the announcement of here's what you're gonna be tested on and they'll hopefully have an orientation session of, hey, you're not required, but it's a volunteer session. We're not gonna pay you for it, but if you wanna learn more about the process, we're not gonna give you the answers, but we'll give you a general overview of what to expect because I know it's easy to say prepare for the position, not the test, 
yeah, prepare for the position. But it is nice also to find out what the test consists of. That's why it's good for all of us when we're getting ready for promotional exam, obviously read everything, talk to as many people as we can um, within your human resources department, talk to your command staff because they probably were involved in past processes, but also talk to others that took the recent test. You know, you're taking the captain's test, find out, talk to those that took the captain's test a year ago or whenever it was last offered. Hey, what do I expect on the test? You know, get some pointers and suggestions and everything else. But these are the most common events, typically at an assessment center. Again, it may be more items, but usually these are the most common items and I'll get more into these in future episodes. But really, I encourage you to learn more about what your fire department will ask of you on a promotional exam so that you have a general idea of what types of events to prepare for. Ask the question. You know, and if your department does not do an orientation process, ask, hey, is there any chance you could maybe do an orientation session? And if they give you the deer in the headlight look of, what are you talking about? I don't want the secrets. I don't want the answers. I don't expect the answers or the secrets. I just love to have a lay of the land. When I come to report that day at that time, what can be expected of me? I mean, will I have to prepare for an oral interview? I mean, again, you as a candidate should be preparing for any type of event, but hopefully you've got a good command staff and human resources department that actually cares enough to try to invest in career development and succession planning, which this really is. Help, help prepare the future leaders of tomorrow. So that said, but regardless of what type of process they throw at you, the ultimate key to success is prepare for the position. Why? Because <laughs> then you'll be prepared for pretty much anything on game day. I know, easier said than done. Anyway, my contact information, please feel free to reach out if I can ever be of assistance to you in your pursuit of the badge. So until the next episode, y'all take care, be safe, be well, everybody.